Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Velvet Door. As you guys know, hey, it's Shinjor. And we're going to get into a very, very um, informative topic. And I am going to keep at um, this series as well. I have a few series that I'm going to be like just adding bits and pieces to. And, and this is definitely one of them. Balancing and understanding that femininity and the great reset. Right? So as a woman, I never like to sugarcoat my reality and live in la, la, la land. No. I like to be honest. I like to keep it real with myself. And I like to always understand that we live in a society, we live in a world where people are sometimes, if not all the time, barely surviving and at their whims, okay? Even those with money are trying to figure out ways to keep their money. So that means that there's a growing atmosphere of people that are feeling a, a bit left out of society, even if they go to work every day, even if they're participating and even if they're, they're, they're um, paying their bills, you know, they, they got food on the table. They still feel like there's a possibility they can get left behind. Right. So I'm going to drink some water as I do this uh, stream. We are looking at, as women, a reality, married, single, straight, gay, whatever. You need to prepare yourself and think wisely about your next steps, financially, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. This is going to be the time where you're going to have to take those mental health breaks and in your mental health breaks, take the time to just understand and balance out you. You can't save the world, okay? I know that's a myth that everybody thinks they can do. But what you can do is directly affect and influence in a positive way those around you and those that you will come in contact with. But you're not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. The stress of you wanting to be everybody's cup of tea is why you're always looking to be part of the next aesthetic. So we're gonna get into um, soft life. And what does soft life look like? in the reset what does it look like what will it look like so let, let's let's look at some things is as y'all know how i do i like to come with facts i like to show you real articles i like to show you real people i don't want to just give you my opinion but i will commentate what i feel and what i believe so let's let's check this out So soft lights, it, uh, it's, it's pretty much this new craze that uh, has everybody up in arms about. So a lot of women, especially Black women, Indigenous women, are feeling like they're not being heard, they're not being appreciated, they're not feeling protected. And though that is true, right, that there is truth in that, they're, they're looking for this soft way to approach life than always feeling like they have to take on the world, right? They're looking for a way to um, tap in to that divine femininity. But the only downside of soft life and even luxury TikTok and all these other um, aesthetics that are popping up left and right is that what happens is that you, you're still trying to fit a cup of tea. You're not just being yourself. You're trying to fit a cup of tea, right? 
and you have convinced yourself that this is what soft looks like. You've convinced yourself that, right? Maybe your soft is getting dolled up and going out to tea for brunch on a Sunday, but maybe somebody else's soft is sitting in some sweatpants, sitting around the house with the hair wild in their natural state, right? So everybody's presentation of what soft looks like and, and what taking it easy looks like is different. Your soft life might be eating shrimps, lobsters, and all types of luxury things. Somebody else's soft life is, listen, I'm about to order me a pizza and I'm not cooking. I'm not going out. I don't feel like getting dressed and going out, right? So it's all subjective what exactly is um, the aesthetic of soft life. But as you can see, uh, I'm just kind of scrolling through TikTok here of some um, women that are showing you what they believe the soft life is. Resorts, traveling, you know, the whole nine, you see? In your robes, your spas, working out, taking it easy, cleaning. But like I said, somebody else's soft life is I'm not working out. I ain't making my bed. Soft life is soft life. I'm chilling. I want to chill in my mess. That's my soft life. <laughs> okay. So um, let's see. We can look at a few more. Let's, you know, like see, very aesthetically, you know, you know, designer stuff that sometimes you really can't afford, you know, you just kind of just go on with the flow. Um, flowers, flowers, you know, that also goes with the aesthetic. Um, it says you're a black girl who lived a hard life and now it's time to turn incredibly soft, right? Soft is expensive though. Let's make that very clear. The, the aesthetic of soft life is very expensive for some people. And um, we're going to get into the real reality of where we are and how the metaverse and how the soft life is just an introduction of people living a second life through the metaverse. That's all. Because once you turn the camera off, once you put that phone down, you have to pay those bills. You got to go to work. Okay. You got to make sure your food's on the table. You got to put that time in. All right. And even if you're opting out of work, you still have to find a way to work. Don't think that doing social media content is not work. That's still work. Okay. You still got to, you still got to be innovative. You got to think outside the box. In fact, I find that sometimes social media content posting is actually a little more tiresome because you have to actually come out your box to think of new ways to do something versus you just having a set job and you know what to do. You clock in, you clock out right? It's almost like being an entrepreneur, a freelancer. When you're an entrepreneur, a lot of times, even as a freelancer, you don't clock out. You don't, right? But this is, uh, this is the aesthetic, you know? This is the aesthetic. Um, soft life. Beautiful women, right? going places, looking beautiful, feeling beautiful, right? At least that's what we say that's beautiful, right? When you feel beautiful, you you know, you put some makeup on, you're supposed to automatically feel beautiful. Soft life, white robe, hair in a messy bun. You know, we know the ecstatic, you know, this is it. It's beautiful, it's nice. But is it reality? Let's talk about it. Let's get into, is this really reality though? Are you really in a soft state? Or are you pretending? Let's check this article out. So because this thing has become very popular, it says black women starting to live the soft life, then came quite quitting. It's not anti-work. It's about drawing boundaries. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. It says, before quiet quitting took corporate America by storm, Black women were quietly quitting their lifestyles. They dubbed it the soft life. An online aesthetic movement, all right? I want you to understand that what you are building is an online persona, okay? That emerged in 2021 that called for Black women to let go of the astronomical expectations that they do it all. Rather than live a life of stress, trying to be career mogul, a style icon, someone who's emotionally available to friends and family 24-7, Black women called for those who have been working way too hard to take a softer approach. Unlike quiet quitting, the soft life isn't confined to scaling back your career efforts. Instead, the movement is about seeking peace in all life aspects aspects, which can include quitting your job or giving less of yourself professionally. When explaining it to others on the internet, many creators will call back to the urban dictionary definition. It's the opposite of hard life, where you make decisions that leave you feeling stress-free and vibrating higher. Less about wealth, though it helps, and more about making good choices. Keywords, though it helps. Okay. When you're living in a first world nation, these are things that you are privy to. You're privy to taking an easy way for the day out. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of people around the world, there, there is no opting out of reality. There is no... Um, there is no stress-free, right? There isn't that. But let's continue reading. The idea of the soft life is thought to have originated in the Nigerian influencer community before migrating to Western internet corners. The tag hashtag soft life on TikTok harbors 282.2 million views and counting. Almost every video under it features Black women offering their advice on how to achieve a life free of tension. I'm going to say this for my Black and Indigenous women worldwide. I understand that for the mental health and the psyche of the average woman today that has to take on the world, and even those that are married, because you're just because you're married, I mean, you're exempt. And those that are stay-at-home moms that are 24-7 with children, um, understand that um, it's, it's okay to take breaks. And I'm all for that. It's okay to take breaks. But it's not okay to pretend that reality isn't what it is, right? So though I understand that more and more women are trying to um, step out of those shoes of wanting to do it all and stepping into the atmosphere of saying, hey, I need help. Hey, I need this. Um, see, this, this is, is not a fairy tale. You know, it's a concept. And it does help. It does help you to keep going. It does help you to keep going. But I think on my channel, I like to uh, put people back into reality without, like I said, without being a Debbie Downer. I'm going to take some water without being a Debbie Downer. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer for anybody. But we got to be honest here. Black women, economically, we are not doing well. And I say we and including the indigenous misclassified women as well. I don't separate myself from the women in my family who still self-identify as black and who still have to face a reality in this country. I don't, I don't separate from that. So there's a lot to be done here. A lot to be done here. But I, like I said, I understand the aesthetic. I understand wanting to take the time because you feel that the men around you are not holding their weight. 
the men around you are only making about what 10, 10 grand more than you, but the average black woman's net worth is between 30 to 35 K, you know, for, for black moms, a, a lot of black women are relying on programs like Head Start when Head Start, excuse me, Head Start will only qualify for families if you are making under 30 K. And there's a lot of black women who are, uh, who are underneath Head Start for their children and they're making under 30K. We got to be honest about what we're looking at and what reality really is all about. Okay. So though I understand we don't want to live, we don't want to deal with the hard life. I get it. But we don't also want to exude ourselves from reality. We don't. So let's um let's take a break one second. We're going to get into the next segment. Let's talk about the real reality. Let's talk about it. The real reality. The real reality is that um, we are going into a, a changing, a changing economy. But before we even go to a change in the economy, we got to deal with a change in atmosphere when it comes to law enforcement, when it comes to how they are choosing to handle criminals in this country. Um, yeah, we're in a, um, we're, we're in a very uh, difficult time right now. Though for others, they don't feel that way. It might not feel the way for everybody. But for the majority of people, for 60% and over, of Americans who barely have a life savings and who can barely have $600 in emergency. Um, this is it. This is where we are right now in reality. All right. So let's check this out real quick. Let's look at what is the real reality right now in America. Wow. The girls and a lot of women want to act So they really want to live the soft life. We we have to kind of reel you back in just a little bit. You know, Shandra is going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. But your mental health and all of this is very important. So you do need those soft days to reflect. All right. So there was a lot of pushback on the Safety Act. A lot of pushback. And then basically what they wanted to do, and they wanted to el el basically eliminate cash bail for all criminals, okay? And what that would have happened was, basically it would have prevented cops from searching for missing offenders until 48 hours after their violation. So I want you to think about that for a second and think about how people elude the police anyway and the police are trying to actively find them right now. So if you... If you install this type of act, you're now just giving criminals the right of way to just start fleeing jurisdictions and possibly fleeing the country. Ridiculous, right? It says the, sa the safety, accountability, fairness, equity today was passed in 2022 and was supposed to go into effect on January 1st, which would have made Illinois the first state in the country to completely eliminate cash bail. This means pre-trial detainees charged with crimes as serious as second-degree murder, aggravated battery, and arson could be released without a cash bond. So that means that pretty much somebody can commit a second-degree murder. They can harm you. They can beat you. They can beat you to your almost a damn pulp. They can burn your house down. And guess what? They will still be let out on the streets the next day. And then it will still be an additional 48 hours or 24 hours to where the cops can't still pursue that person. Think about that. Okay. This is why everybody was calling it the purge act last year. It says the act made headlines when online critics compared it to the purge movie where all crimes became or becomes legal for one day a year. Former Illinois state trooper and proponent of the safety act, Marie Franklin, told KSDK the law would affect over 250
thousand people per year who were held in a pretrial detention but unable to post bail. Well, I can kind of see that point right there where you have somebody that is potentially um, innocent. Somebody that's potentially innocent and um, they're being held where they can't post their bond. Maybe their bond is only $100. Maybe their bond is only $500. And they can't post bail. They can't, they can't get out, right? And they probably are innocent. And of course, like I said, with the way how the economy is and the way how families are really struggling right now, um, maybe this is where we're kind of going. You know, more and more people are not going to be able to post their bell because they simply just don't have the money. So you're going to have people sitting. And this kind of reminds me of the Khalif Broder uh, situation that was in New York where he was in jail for three years because he couldn't post, I believe it was a $500 bail, right? So th there is truth in something that is happening. But what is the numbers compared to people who are stuck in bail that can't post it to the people that are actually threats to society and that can post bails or can post bails and this is actually going to benefit them instead, Right? It says the law was mostly been rejected by the state's law enforcement community with 100 of the Illinois' 102 county prosecutors opposing it. It has also been slammed by the families of victims of a violent crime. And I, I have to agree. I have to agree. You know, if, if you have a family member that was harmed in a violent crime and that person gets to get out just uh, 24 hours later or not even 24 hours later, they get to get out right there and then. It's almost as if like you're slapping them on the hand and say, hey, I'll come back and get you if you're still around type stuff. Know what I'm saying? So someone says that Illinois has become a social experience experiment. I have to agree. You know, they're also implementing um, AI technology to start predicting when crime is going to happen in Chicago. Yeah, that, that's also now a thing now. So yeah, this is um, this is not just um, a conspiracy theory and people are just making guesses. No, this is actually real life situations that are happening. And they've actually said that they have a 90% uh, accuracy in predicting when crime is gonna happen at what location in Chicago. Yeah, that's where we at right now with it. I'm gonna drink some water one second, y'all. So here we are, the purge law. But it was actually pushed back. It was paused. It was supposed to begin this month. Um, it didn't, of course, as you see now, we're about, what, four days into the new year. They postponed it. But I do believe that they are still going to try to implement this. So why am I showing you guys this? Why am I showing women this? It's because I need you women to start being armed and ready. I need you women to be on your P's and Q's. I need you to look at your... Surround us at all times. I need for you to watch your six. That's what we say in the military. Always watch your six. I need for you to understand that people are not that nice. Okay? I know we have sometimes, not all, but a lot of women, a lot of people have this, this urge to say, well, it wouldn't happen to me. Or that person don't look like they would do something. Let me tell you something. Throw the looks out the window. Okay? Throw it out the window. I need you to come back to reality after you come out your soft life and you usa and you align your chakras and you spiritually get it in tune. I need you to understand that even in your in tuneness, someone is out to tune around you. And it's not someone you have to know, it'll be a stranger. Right? So so this is why I say I, I want to. I want the girls to be the girls and I want the girls to show and pave the way for femininity for women and young girls that are looking up to us. But I also want us to understand this is a very real world we are living in, okay? Your spirituality, your wholeness, your oneness, your enlightenment will always be tested. 
always be tested. So, so we have a lot of the top banks. I don't know if you guys are banking with like PNC Bank, TD Bank, um, City, HSBC, um, even MasterCard, Wells Fargo. All these um, major banks around the country are going to start testing out digital currencies. According to the announcement, the study is set to take place over the next 12 weeks. Now, this was in December, so they're about to wrap this up very soon. Um, the study is to set take place uh, to test the working realities of running a network of central bank commercial digital money on the share ledger. Uh, 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 it says eight other large financials. You have uh, BNY Melon. You have... Um, I already named a lot of these already that you guys have heard of. And it says, basically, it's going to be testing out how are they able to start implementing a digital cryptocurrency. I don't know. It's going to be really be crypto because it's <laughs> dealing with the banks. I don't think it's going to be that crypto. But um, they are looking to start um, testing out a digital asset settlement platform. Yeah. Okay. Now, for those of you who have been in the investment world, you have been in the crypto world that you probably know. And, and even for those that are into like the conspiracy theories and things like that, you already kind of saw this coming. You know, they've always been hinting at um, bringing in a digital dollar. A matter of fact, Biden last year actually publicly said, matter of fact, let me bring that up for you guys. One second. Let's bring up the reality of uh, Biden actually admitting it is time for cryptocurrency or a digital currency to, um, or as they would say, a digital dollar to come. Let's see. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of people are hoping and wishing on fiat, right? I understand. But, you know, ladies, we, we're moving towards a new order. Every century is a new order. You got to catch up. It's been happening for a little while now. All right. So check this out, guys. Let's talk about it. The Biden administration moves closer to creating a digital dollar. It says the White House said on Friday that after President Joe Biden issued an executive order in March, calling on a variety of agencies to look at ways to regulate digital assets. The agencies came up with nine reports covering cryptocurrency impacts on financial markets, the environment and innovation and other elements of the economic system. The central bank digital currencies differ from existing digital money available to the general public, such as the balance in a bank account, because they would be a direct liability of the Federal Reserve not a commercial bank. So like I said, a lot of this stuff is starting to become the reality. Um, lawmakers have submitted various pieces of legislation to regulate cryptocurrency and digital assets. Um, we we kind of saw this coming down the pipeline. We saw this coming down the pipeline. Okay. We knew that eventually this was going to happen. All right. But what, what else is happening now? What else is happening? Let's tap into more of the money and then we're going to move from money. And then we're going to move into, um, let's look into um, the soft life travel reality as well. The gender gap in the financial department and everything I'm showing you are recent articles from just 2022. I'm not showing you anything from the past. Showing you everything from 2022. Some quick facts. Only one in five women are financially healthy versus 29% of men. I'm going to keep it real being that it's 20% and 29%. That's still not good either way it goes. Despite gender, it's not good. Only 11% of black women and 7% of Latina women are financially healthy. By contrast, the same figure rises to 25% for white women. 
I mean, we kind of expected that, right? But for Black women, only 11% of you are financially healthy. Only 11%, right? So that's why I said I understand us wanting to um, live in a moment and enjoy our soft life, enjoy our um, balance in our mental health days. But understanding that at the same breath, you're still in a very rare reality where financially, most of you, Black Indigenous women, most of you are not doing financially well. Women who are married or living with a partner are more likely to be financially healthy than women who are not, but still less likely to be financially healthy than married or partnered men, right? We got we to gotta come back to reality, ladies. And, and I know in the same breath, somebody will say, well, why do women have to pick up the slack? The men should be picking up the slack and we wouldn't have to worry about our financial health if the men were actually providing us to be financially healthy. All valid points. I'm all with it. All valid points. But the truth remains. I know you don't want to look like the captain, save a hoe or the I can do it all superwoman. But the world is telling you otherwise, right? Right? So we deserve to be celebrated. We deserve to be protected. But at the same time, we have to understand that as of right now, no one is going to do it better than we can. Unfortunately, that is the reality that is paid, right? So let's talk into, um, let's get into solo traveling. I know this has become a very, very popular thing. I know. Trust me, I'm a, I listen, y'all, I'm a loner. I'm a person that likes to travel alone. I will go to a, I will go to a restaurant and have a good old time by myself, sit at a bar, enjoying a nice old juicy steak, drinking some wine, and just living my la, la, la life. Let me tell you something. I love doing things solo, but I also love protecting myself too. You cannot be obtuse to your reality. A woman was says that she was nearly trafficked on a solo trip to Turkey. The video sparked debate about solo travel saving for women. And I've told women this a lot of times, please stop announcing you're about to travel somewhere and you know you're going by yourself. Also, stop uploading videos in the country while you're still there that you are by yourself. You have to understand that traffickers, they watch, they watch these hashtags. They also watch when someone tags a location and they also know that there's an increase of women wanting to travel alone by themselves. You cannot tell people when you are traveling. And I know you want to show, we got to listen, the aesthetics, right? Remember we're talking about aesthetics? You want to show, you know, you're in the resort and you having your soft life. You're living your life. You, you're at peace. You want to show wholeness and oneness. But I'm going to tell you this. There's no more greater peace and oneness and wholeness like privacy to keep yourself safe. And always making sure that you let somebody know close to you where you are at all times. If you plan on doing something that day, let somebody know back home. Hey, I'm going to go do this uh, this trip around the Eiffel Tower. Then after that, I'm going to this restaurant. And then after that, I'm going to this place and I'm going back to my room. So you know my itinerary for the day. Even if you're just making up your itinerary the day of, right? You've got to understand that people are just as smart as you sometimes okay somebody said that she was drunk on a from a flight 
and the police, the, she didn't even know. The police told her. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're solo traveling and you're drunk. I'm a, I'm a hope that she meant that she was sleepy, but I do think that she means that she was drinking some, some champagne, wine or whatever. This is, this is scary. If you're solo traveling as well, don't drink. Please. If you're going to have a drink, do it in your room safely. Don't get out there and don't start drinking. Don't take any drinks. It's, you should treat yourself the way how you would treat yourself at home. Okay? Always, always, always protect your neck. You got to protect your neck. The reality of men and everybody around you is not going to change just because you want to live a soft life. It's not. Because you want to live in, in a high value. Is that what they call it now? Right? You want to be high value. You know? You want to be a high value woman. You want to put on the aesthetic so that when a man comes in your life, he knows what to expect and how to treat you. I get it. I get it. Trust me. I get it. You want to set the tone so that any man that comes around you, he already can see, oh, she already got it like that. I get it. I know. I know. You got to come back to reality sometimes. You got to come back to reality, baby girls. Let's get into some. Um, let's get into some real reality with this metaverse shit. Excuse my language, y'all. Metaverse. Your safety is not only about real life. Your safety is even in the damn internet. Let's really, let's really, really, really talk about it. Y'all want to really talk about it? Then let's talk about it. Why the woman is even unsafe online? We're going to get to the dark side of things, right? Online violence and abuse against women is common. 89% of women who respond to the survey have witnessed another woman being subjected to online violence and abuse. And 50% of women who responded to the survey have experienced it themselves. Sexual harassment cyber stalking, threats of violence on Facebook and other social media platforms were commonly cited. Let's really talk about it. So though we are, we are building our online personas and our aesthetics and we want to actually um, not only have a soft life in real life, we want our Instagram pages and our TikToks to look very soft life-like, right? Because that's what it's all about. You're ecstatic, your persona. But then you have to worry about a reality, not just in real life, but online, where your persona lies, okay? This is where it is, in the metaverse. Online violence and abuse against women is gendered with attacks often highly sexualized, misogynistic, focused on a woman's body, appearance, or sexuality. Women are attacked online as a result of their other identities, right? Sexual orientation, gender identity, race, and age. Online violence and abuse against women has a serious impact on them. It causes significant psychological harm. Women have reported feeling anxious, insecure, fearful about their physical safety and have a sense of powerlessness. In addition, 
71% of women who take part in the survey said the threat of online violence and abuse affects their participation on social media. You know, I was listening to this uh, content creator and she was saying how she limits her social media usage because when she looks at what other women are doing and how it feel like they're doing more than her, it makes her very subconscious. So the only time she gets on social media is to post something and then she immediately, immediately logs off. If you have to do all that, you don't need to be on social media, okay? Your soft life might be to stay off of social media. That might be a part of soft life. I think soft life, we're going to have to start saying, soft life might have to be going back holistic. You might going to have to come out this metaverse. Because if the metaverse is doing that much damage to you, that when you look at other people living their lives or announcing their accomplishments or or whatever they're doing, it's making you physically feel some type of way in real life, not just in your online persona, but in real life, it is time to take a break. Your soft life might be to log out. How about that? Your soft life might be to not record yourself living a quote unquote out soft life. Maybe your soft life might be to deal with the moment in privacy. Maybe that's real soft life. But like I said, we cannot change how people react on the internet. People are going to do things on the internet they normally wouldn't do in real life. Come on, I think we all know that by now. Okay? They're going to say things and do things that they normally wouldn't do, knowing that they're not really about what they're talking about. Or you got people who become so influenced by social media, they get so worked up in social media that they are willing to change their own personal reality by doing something dumb. So we've seen people kill other people. We've seen people jump other people, harm other people, stalk other people because of online debacles. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing you also have to understand, you can't change the reality of men. Okay? Sexual assault in the metaverse. Now, the metaverse, as you guys can see, um, you see um, this dude over here, Zuckerberg. And they've been trying to implement these avatars. I don't know if y'all been noticing on Instagram, they have avatars now. Yeah, because that's a slow, that's a soft introduction into um, the metaverse. Your metaverse is going to be an avatar. You're not going to just be using the internet in a 1D or 2D style. You're going to be using the internet and interacting it with it with a 3D or 4D style now, right? So... It says disturbing accounts... Of women being sexually assaulted and harassed in the metaverse are racking up. Now, we haven't even fully got in the metaverse yet, y'all. And I know for a lot of y'all, y'all saying I don't want to be a part of the metaverse. I'm going to tell you right now. If you are on social media every day. If you are holding your phone more than three hours a day. You are pretty much setting yourself up to be trained to be in that goddamn metaverse. Okay. A 21-year-old woman says she was raped into one hour being in the metaverse. And let me not say that. Let me say the R word because I know this is YouTube. I got to be very careful saying things. A deep dive into allegations of being virtually gang R word. Do y'all hear that? You ever, you ever see when, like, people play, like, Grand Theft Auto 2? Like, Grand Theft Auto and, like, um, before it was, like, an online, when, pe like, kids or just regular boys or girls, even when they play the game and they would pick up the prostitute in the game and then they have sex with that prostitute and then they kill the prostitute to get the money from them. If you think that won't happen to you in the metaverse, please think again. There's a lot of people that say that, what they do in on the internet is not a direct reflection of what they do in real life. 
but it is a, a direct reflection of your curiosity. That's why your algorithm is tailored the way it's tailored. It's your curiosity. It says that she has claimed her avatar was then raped by a user. I'm oh, sorry, our word. While another watch and pass around a virtual bottle of vodka. And others could be seen watching through a window. It says one avatar is recorded saying, check this out. It's a free show. Oh, getting it, getting down with the gritty, you heard? Now, who that sound like? Guess the race. That's really cute. Let's, let's be honest here. Look, they, they, they got it. Look, got them in 4K. In 4K, Swag Daddy 6 9 It says what? Passing a virtual booze bottle around. And this person is in the metaverse screaming a free show. Y'all, I, I know it sounds crazy. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? These are cartoons. Let me tell you something. These are real people behind these avatars. I want you to think about your kids that are using these um, avatar games. You know how you guys are putting your kids in the Oculus, in these little VR headsets. You got them playing, um, what's that game? Minecraft and all these other craft games that you can actually, uh, you can put uh, mods on there and, and make them do a lot of different things that the game normally wouldn't allow you to do. I want you to understand your kids are in these Oculus VR headsets and this is what's going on. Look at that. Look. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Welcome to reality and welcome to the metaverse right unfortunately this is a reality that a lot of us are going to have to be wary of as we indulge more and more and i wanted to kind of throw this in there about uh generation alpha for the moms out there and i'm going to do a whole build on who is generation alpha for those who don't know, Generation Alpha are children who are born between 2010 and 2024. So technically, my kids are definitely Generation Alpha. Most of the millennials, our kids are Generation Alpha children. And I'm going to do a full breakdown on Generation Alpha, Generation Beta. I'm going to break it all the way down for all the moms out there. Because like I said, this is about our femininity and women. And this is just what the reset unfortunately it's going to be about right unfortunately unfortunately let's check a few more things out before we close out so you, you you're looking for your soft life and you have completely indulged yourself into the metaverse you have a lot of women who are into playing the Sims. I like playing the Sims. I'm not going to hold you. I like playing the Sims, y'all. You have people that play games like uh, Second Life. You know, these, these are all um, avatars. And imagining building um, different lives and realities within a concept. So um, you, you're going to have more... Um, a lot, of, a lot of companies are going to start catering to the soft life and the different aesthetics and finding a way to get you guys to go into finding that soft life in the metaverse, right? You're going to have brands that's going to deal with um, virtual fitness, right? Here we go. Virtual fitness, right? Digital scent technology. What is that? Another exciting prospect for the future is the use of scent technology. It's so health and wellness brands in the metaversal, the use of fragrances to accompany a company with senses of sight and touch. This will help to create a better metaversal experience and can be useful in treatments, spa platforms, and so on, where fragrances greatly affect the individual state of mind. 
Look at that. So what if you have a virtual soft life? See, all these things that you see, and when you start seeing them actually making content, they're making, um, they're writing articles about the, uh, these different trends and aesthetics that are popping up. Understand that there are companies that are paying attention to that. There are companies that want in on that. Virtual reality may have the potential to become a regular part of your treatment plan. They're using VR technology as we speak to help people with chronic pain. Yeah, Walk, welcome to the reality that we're in. Okay. What about spy in the metaverse? The, the, the technology shaping the future. You want your soft life, but you can't really afford it in real life, right? So why not opt out for an internet metaverse soft life? Pain management, virtual fitness, your mental health, right? A lot of things that we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of people willingly putting themselves inside the metaverse. This is just the surface of the Great Reset. As I said, this is just part one. I'm just kind of going through a lot of different things at once of what to expect in the next coming decades, right? Because like I said, though I understand the, uh, the softness that a lot of our women are yearning for, the femininity that we're yearning for, the acceptance that we're learning for, we also have to understand that there is a world around us that is still going to turn, all right? So while it's turning, let's make sure that we're controlling the speed. Let's make sure that we're controlling the rotation in which it goes. Let's not be left behind trying to opt out of reality. Opting out of reality, in my opinion, you're, you're one step from taking other drastic measures, okay? And like I said, I understand life is not hard. I am a woman. I am a mother. And there, there are things that I think about all the time. You know, how I'm going to prepare myself in this series. I'm going to touch on um, defense tactics that we need to start talking about supplies you guys need to start packing for, um, even getting yourself equipped. Even if you live in a home, if you live in an apartment, or even if you live in your car, just things the way to protect yourself in this next coming reset. This is not the first reset, ladies. We have been here before, but we wanna be prepared. There's nothing wrong with preparation. There's nothing, um, there's, there's no such thing, I think, of being too prepared, okay? So with that being said, I will see you on part two of Femininity and the Great Reset and how we can start protecting ourselves as women here, as the economy, as our society begins to change around us. And we're not going to leave each other behind. All right. See you next time.